Try me tell anybody I love you. Don't be afraid. Look at him. Has Apu just born? You can't trust him with money, no. Look at your neighbor. Say I love you. Okay, look at another person on the other side and say I love you. I told you what that girl said had to do with the message. You didn't believe me. The reason is now. At the end of this, this my intro, we'll do it again and now it will have better meaning. Um, that word love is one of the most um, misused and confused words ever. And it has caused many problems because we can't define the word. English language is so limited and it has caused problems. In other languages, when you say I love you, you will know the kind you are talking about. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? But in English, when you say I love you, it's very confusing because you can say I love Arsenal, I love Apple, I love oranges, and I love my wife. You know, that's very wrong. In other languages, all those loves are different types and we can differentiate what we are saying. But in English, it's the same word. So because of your relationship with Asna, you're using the same I love you, your relationship with oranges, you say I love you, you now also treat your wife. Because it's the same word you are using. Words are important. Words carry meaning. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So after this message, next time somebody says I love you, you will ask them which kind. So tell anybody I love you. Ask them which kind. <laughs> Praise God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Because we've refused to understand that word love, it has caused too much problems. Let's go to Second Samuel chapter 13. Let's break it down. So I'm talking about three kinds of love. And like I said, I will share a lot of things from this book. Please get this book. Whether I'm married or single, it will help you. Common love lies that can stop you from finding true love. From verse 1, we are going to read together everybody. Second Samuel 13, from verse 1. It said, and it came to pass, after this, I'm reading NIV if you can. Put we'll switch it to NIV, DJ if you have. It said, and it came to pass, in the course of time, Amnon, the son of David, did what? I can't hear you. So the Bible agreed that Amnon fell in love. Amnon fell in love with Tamar, the beautiful sister of Absalom, son of David. Amnon became so obsessed with his sister Tamar that he made himself ill. Those days, people who used to marry their stepsister, it was okay, or their half-sisters. He said, so Amnon became obsessed with his sister, and he, he made himself ill. She was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for him to do anything to her. Now, Amnon had an advisor named Jonadab, son of whatever, whatever. He said, he asked Amnon, why do you, the king's son, Look so haggard morning after morning. Won't you tell me? This guy was actually having an experience. He fell in love so much that he could not eat. He was getting haggard. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You fall, in, you fall into that kind of love before where you could not eat, you could not think, you cannot do anything. You, you're only always thinking about the person throughout the day. You were cooking your food, your food got burnt. <laughs> in school, your grades came down. You, your concentration at work reduced. He said, um, he said, why are you the king's son growing lean, haggard, my, haggard morning? Won't you tell me? Next verse, he said, Amnon said to him, I am what? In love with Tamar, my brother's sister. He said, the guy now told him, go to bed, pretend to be ill. Jonadab said, when your father comes to see you, tell him that, you know, you should bring, send your staff to come and bring food for you. Go to verse 6. So Amnon put the plan to work, pretended he was ill. Verse 7, so David sent what to Tamar. I said, look, take food to your brother in his house and give him. Verse 8, so Tamar went to the house and actually prepared the food. Verse 9, she took the pan and served him the bread, and he refused to eat. Send everyone out of here, Amnon said. So everyone left him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, bring the food into my bedroom so that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the bread that she, prepared, that she had prepared and brought it to her brother Amnon in the bedroom. But when she took it to him to eat, he grabbed her and said, what? Come to bed with me. This is a full movie. <laughs> Verse 12. No, my brother. <laughs> she said to him, Don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. He said, What about me? Where could I get rid of my disgrace? He said, What about you? You will be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Now see what she suggested. Please speak to the king. 
he will not keep me from being married to you. Take note of that. That's important information, okay? It says, but he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he did what? Are you there? He did what? He raped her. Verse 15. Then Amnon did what? I'm not hearing you. I need you to read for me. Amnon did what? Hated her. Hated her with what? They say, in fact, the hatred, he, hit, he, he, he hated her more than he what? He loved her. He hated her more. He said, he, and Amnon said to her, get up and get out. No, she said to him, sending me away will be a greater wrong than what you have already done. But he refused to listen to her. He called his personal servant and said, get this woman out of my sight and do what? The problem in many marriages and in relationships and generally in society is that we've not been able to differentiate the three kinds of love. There are many kinds of love, but I'm majoring on three today. We've not been able to differentiate it. We use the same word loosely. This guy, the Bible agrees he was in love. The only challenge is that there are three kinds of love, and we need to know what kind of love this one was. That's why I told you when your neighbor said, I love you, ask him which kind. Because the kind of love determines our reaction to that love. This kind of love is emotional love, is desire love. They call it eros. It's a passionate desire sexual love. It was never meant. Everything God did is good. So it is good. God created this love. It's a good love. It's just that we are the one misappropriating it. It was never meant to lead you to marriage. Is somebody getting this? This love is relevant because that's what keeps the world going. This love is the reason why women want a mate and men want to meet. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Women want what? A mate and men want what? To meet. This is the love causing it. Without this love, men, are, men won't find women attractive. Women won't find men attractive. The world will be a very uninteresting place. Nobody will get married. This is the love that makes a boy find a girl attractive. You don't have this love when you are a child. This is why children under five and co can have a bath together and not see anything interesting. They see each other as playmates. As they begin to grow, this capacity of love is infused into them. So the girls begin to notice that they're attracted to the boys. The boys begin to notice that they're suddenly attracted to the girls. The same girls that were having a bath with naked, they find that they have to cover themselves now. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? This is the love keeping the world together. I mean, make, co- making sure that there's continuous production of human beings. Without this love, man will not have sex with women. Women will not have sex with men. So it's an important kind of love. Without it, nobody will get married. Nobody will be interested in the opposite sex. The only challenge is that this kind of love is just a passionate love. It's an emotional love. It's a sexual love. God never designed that when you have these feelings, you move to, I want to marry you. That's not the design. This is supposed to say, wow, you are beautiful or you are handsome. What you should say from here is not, I want to marry you, is I want to know you. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? But the challenge is that when people have felt this love, because this love, when they say love is blind, this is the one I'm talking about. This one sharks. So when it grips some people, they move from here to I want to marry you. It's the love that makes men want to mate and makes women want a mate. Do you notice in the drama that was going on, what did the man want? He wanted to mate. What did the woman suggest? Marriage. In the midst of rape, she had her senses in place enough. To say, let's marry. I told you yesterday, women want security. Men want what? Sex. I was away yesterday, remember? That's why anywhere in the world, when you propose to a woman, she's happy. Anywhere in the world. If you want to confuse any woman, just say, I want to marry you. You see a smart executive, smart government official, smart business owner that makes sound decisions. Once you mention marriage, her sense of judgment is threatened incredibly. She can marry somebody that's totally not good for her. because psychologically and naturally, she's wired to want a mate. That offer of a mate threatens her whole sense of reasoning. Many women here can attest to that. You are smart. You make good financial decisions, good academics. You are smart in your class, but you, 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 are, you keep dating bum boys. You know bum boys. You keep dating incredible guys. Wrong for you. 
and you say, I'm unlucky with love. You're not unlucky with love. You just need to have emotional management. You need to be able to identify what you are feeling. This love is attraction. Every proper marriage starts from here. So in one of my books, How to Know If You or She Loves, I say fake love and real love are identical twins. They look alike. Because every love, the one that will be real, the one that will be fake, they start with excitement. So when you want to differentiate, they, they, are, they are not going to end the same way. They can start the same way. Every love starts with interest. Something will attract you to that person. It might be their dressing, it might be their looks, it might be their way they talk, it might be something they have or how they do something. That is fine. But don't move from there to I want to marry you. You should move from here to I want to know you. This is just the first kind of love. It's what makes a man's body boil when he sees a woman. It's what makes a woman need the security that a man provides. Like I told you, that's why if you propose a woman anywhere in the world, she's going to be excited. Say, it's a lie. It's a lie. Even after seven years of hard labor. <laughs> See, I've been dating a man for seven years, washing, cleaning, cooking, sometimes sleeping over. And the man proposed. She says, it's a lie. How can it be a lie? <laughs> You've been suffering for seven years. She says, it's a lie. Because this is what she has been waiting for all her life. In the midst of rape, this woman had enough sense to denegotiate marriage. Because that's what she wants. With marriage, she doesn't mind you to have sex with her. Because she will get something out of it. She's even smart. I said yesterday, thank God for her that she's smart. I wish more women could be bold enough to say what they want out of a relationship. Men and women carry out the same activity, but for different purposes. Men and women always are in the same activity, but for different purposes. And because... One party, which is mostly women, is not bold enough to say what she wants. She's always cheated. Men and women are in the same for different reasons. For instance, men and women talk for different reasons. Men talk for information. Women talk for affection. Men talk because they have something important to say. Women talk because they have somebody important to talk to. So a woman wants to talk to you not because what she's saying is important. She wants to talk to you because you are important. We can talk about anything. So she can want to have small talk with you. She wants to talk about the neighbor. She wants to talk about, did you hear about this person? It's not the topic. It's the person. It's you. But for men, men don't talk except it's something important. Men will call on that man and say, eh, hey, Pastor Sunday, well done. I just, ah, I'm tired today. <laughs> say, what? That's why you call me? <laughs> so men talk, because so, most times in the beginning of the talking stage, women think that the man is very interested in me. You tell your friends, he calls me every day, he's very interested in me. No, he's getting information. Say, what do you do? What do you want to do? How many children do your father have? Do they have work? He wants to know if you'll be taking care of them or they can take care of themselves. You think he's interested? He's, he's, he's interested in my family. No, he's not. He's not. He's trying to see if he's a liability. He knows the load you're already carrying. He doesn't want to add on that set of load. There was one girl I liked one time before I met my wife. I, 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 I went to visit her and spent time with her. The same day she told me all her family problems. Father is sick. Mother is out of work. Their rent is due. Her school fees is due. Yes, as in, do you want to hear? There's no remaining, there's no remaining part of the story. That's the last time. I saw her. I was a broke boy then, just starting my life. You have all this problem. Two of us can't join together. <laughs> two must be better than one, not two worse than one. Are you here, somebody? So, men and women are always in the same activity for different reasons. That drama that was going on there, the man was in it for what? Sex. The woman was there negotiating what? Marriage. I wish more women could be as bold as this woman. To say what you want. You are dating somebody for seven years. You are pretending you are happy. Say what you want. I told you yesterday, men are always saying what they want. Women are always, their strategy is to pretend. Then one day the guy will pity me and say what he wants. No, 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 no. From beginning of dating, express what you want. When the man say what you want, say what I told you yesterday. The man say, come and spend the night. Say, I'm coming. Say, what do you have in mind? What will you do to me? He'll tell you, hmm. I will, hmm. I will take you on the bed. I will just say, hmm, I'm coming. What, I, what, I'll be there by 10. Is that okay? Say yes. Good. Say, I'm, I'm on my way now. You say, ah, correct. I'm just approaching pastor's house to pick him. So I'm bringing pastor. He say, why? So that he will join us, then we'll start the sex. Me, it's marriage I want. But women don't do that. They just go and keep giving and giving and hoping that this man will just marry me one day. And that day they'll propose. He'll not shout, oh, he said, I, I told you yesterday, I told you yesterday, once you propose to one woman, a win for one woman is a win for all women. People that don't know, how, they don't know how. They don't even know it's a fool that proposal. They say, Woo! They say, Woo! It's a federal win for all women. 
They don't even see the person. Just if you just post only ring, and they do. Congrats, babe. They don't even know what's going on because it's a win for one, it's a win for all. All women are happy for any woman that hasn't proposed to. <laughs> is that what I'm saying? So this love is sexual, passionate, emotional love. It's necessary. Are you here, somebody? It's necessary, but it shouldn't be from here to I want to marry you. People have gone from here to go and sign documents. But the challenge with this love is that once he hits his peak, you saw the story. Once the guy had sex, they say he hated her more than he loved her. That's, that's the only challenge with this love. That's why this love can't hold marriage. This love can't carry marriage. It's a powerful thing, but it can't carry marriage. Because once you hit the crescendo, once the woman gets to the wedding and marries you, she will now see what a useless person. Her eye, she was blind before that day. After the wedding, you reach home. She will now find out you don't have coke, cooker, you don't have stove, you don't have account, you don't have plans. She didn't know this one before. Because she was seeing that, end, that destination, that wedding was her end goal. When she gets there, her eyes will clear. She will start complaining. You can't resist my... She, he was useless before. But because you had your own secrets... See, it's selfishness that put people in trouble. When, when you see men and women marry themselves and they complain, they, they, they thought they were using that person to fulfill their dream. Only to find out that, that person was the one using them. So two scammers <laughs> scammed themselves. They now reach their father. You are so useless. Say, you two, you are useless. I don't know how I end up with you. They both were scamming themselves. The woman was using the man to fulfill her life loving of marrying. All her mates have married. She wants to marry too. So, he, so women, is not even the man they love. It's the marriage they love. It's that wedding they want. Not you. You are, you are just a willing participant. <laughs> Many men don't know. Many men don't know. It's not even you. Are you here, somebody? It's that dream of getting married. On the other hand, men too. Ah, men, are, they're only even funniest. That's why I have this book here, Seven Qualities Wise Men Want. Men, men don't know they have needs. Many, most of the men have counseled in crisis marriage, Pastor. Most of them. One of the questions I ask is our training in counseling. Why did you even marry this person? How did you choose this person? 99% of the time, I will hear, Pastor, I just saw her person. <laughs> and something told me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sexual passion. Because he too doesn't, he's not acquainted with how his emotions operate. As a man, a woman's body can make you propose. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because that sexual part is correct. It's very correct. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Please, my time is going. Oh, let me be fast. That sexual passion is so strong. See, this guy, you see that he was growing lean. Did you see it? Did you see that he couldn't eat? Would you think that with this love, ah, he can never break it? I mean, the moment the sexual passion is fulfilled, he couldn't stand the girl. He said he hated her more than he loved her. He, told, he, he said, get up and get out. This is somebody that could not eat. Oh. So if you, don't know your, if you don't know your makeup, you will think everything you are feeling you need to act on. He saw someone fine girl sing in choir. He said, hey, this is how men pick wife, pastor. They talk about she say, hey, the way they get the sing. Something told me she's my wife. It's your sexual passion talking to you. It's not something. They will go and marry this woman and find after the sex. Now find out, I can't talk to her. She's too stubborn. She's too quarrelsome. She can't cook. She's useless. She was before. But your sexual passion was too strong. So you need to be able to interpret how what you feel. It's not everything you feel that you must go to the registry from there. Mm -mm. I love you or I like you should be, I want to know you, not I want to marry you. Is somebody getting this? So that's the first kind of love. It's sexual, passionate love. It's very necessary. That's what makes us even interested in each other at all. But it's never for you to build marriage on. No, because once you hit it, if there's nothing more, everything collapses. What's the second kind of love you should have? Please, oh, buy this book. I'm begging you, not because I'm selling book. I can't finish. You can see I'm rushing. I can't finish what I want to say. Second kind of love is in um, Titus chapter 2. This is where... This where your, this first love should graduate to first. Titus chapter 2, from verse 2 to 4. DJ, be fast. So the next time that somebody says, I love you, we say, which one? Which type? He said, teach the older men to be temperate and all that. Go to verse 3, sorry. Verse 3. He said, likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, 
not to be slanderers nor, or addicted to much wine, but to teach what... Um, next verse. Okay, let's just go here. That they should urge the younger women to do what? Love their husbands. Again, thank God for the Bible. The Bible breaks down what different love means. This word love here is not the same love everywhere in the Bible. This word love here is filio. Okay? So it's not the same love as every other place you love in the Bible. It's not the same love as this one that Absalom, um, this Amnon guy had. This particular love here, the original Greek word there is filio. It means friendship kind of love. Philadelphia. It means friendship kind of love. It means brotherly love. My party love. So, the first love should not lead to I want to marry you. It should lead to I want to know you, where you will check if you guys can be friends. Because what will make you want to stay with the person you have married after the glamorous wedding and photographers have gone? And what will make you want to stay with the woman after you have had sex with her three times? Straight. <laughs> the only thing, some people have noticed, when you have sex with someone for a long time, you, you get to a stage, you start, the person starts irritating you if there's nothing else holding you. This is how your psychological and biological makeup is. There must be something more after the sex, and that is friendship. That is the fact that you guys have similar values, things to talk about, friendship kind of love. That's the second stage. So this first stage should always move to friendship. It shouldn't move to sex. It shouldn't move to marriage. It should move to what? Friendship love. Because after the sexual passion is gone, what is left is that I like you. I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. Many couples don't have this because they started from that first one straight to marriage. That's why you see people that are married, they can't talk. No friendship. They don't even like to see each other. No, no basis of connection. No similar thoughts, no similar values, nothing to talk about. Mama Kechi, how are you? Say, I'm fine. Papa Kechi, you uncle? I'm fine. How's Nkechi? She's fine. How are us? <laughs> no conversation. No friendship. This is why some men can stay out of the house all day. Because he, he was a grown instruction home to do. The person there, hey, hey, she knows. Hey, hey, she knows. <laughs> no, no connection. Nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about. I tell women all the time. This one is a woman. You see, what helps you attract a man is not what to help you keep him. I have the book there. Seven things I barely want to tell women. Please, I beg you, buy these books. Not because I'm selling books. I can't teach you everything I know in two minutes. My professor, Professor Emeritus, Solomon David. You know him in the Bible. He said, yes, he's a professor. He had 1,000 women in his life at the same time. That's research. Even Harvard has not done that research. <laughs> he said a beautiful, a beautiful woman, a beautiful head, a, uh, on an, a beautiful face on an empty head. It's like putting a... So he said he had dated many women that are very beautiful, but you see? So he couldn't even stand them. Can't have a normal conversation. You don't even know politics. You don't know who APC is. You don't know who PDP is. Who is APDC? Yes, sir. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm going out. I'll come back later. <laughs> because all you know is Mac and makeup. So you need to build other aspects of your life. You too, as a man, you need to build your emotional side. Because a woman is more emotional. So you can't just be talking of things that are not the matter. She, she will talk about us. So both of you need to adjust the most the friendship. Because when the sexual pleasure has come down, when the wedding uh, guests have gone, what you have is that friendship. Many, many couples don't have it. So they usually force themselves to do, do things together. They can't even take a walk. They can't go on vacation. They can't do anything together. They hate each other. Any opportunity. That's why COVID made many people divorce. Because before COVID, they were being distracted. But when they were COVID, they were stuck in the same house with their problem. <laughs> and people were divorcing. Why? Because they were saying, why did I marry this idiot? <laughs> Who are you again? What do you please explain? <laughs> Introduce yourself. Who are you? They didn't know each other. Because this second stage of love is the stronger part of love. It's stronger than the first one. Marry your friend. We tell you all the time. Marry your friend. Don't move from... Whenever you're feeling that giz giz, it's not love. Oh. The challenge with the first one, let me tell you quickly now, you will feel it for many people. So it's a useless kind of love. You will feel it for many people. Even after you're married, though, you will still find your person. <laughs> you, it doesn't change. Because it's just a feeling, just an emotional feeling. You will still feel it after marriage. But you see, friendship usually takes time, takes similarity to build. So you will feel it for fewer people. And if you get what I'm saying, the first one you will feel it for what? Many people. Even some people you've never met, you just saw them on TV. Just show one music, music star. He's here, this dada. He has six pack and big chest. The girl just say, <laughs> I love him. You don't know him. <laughs> you will feel this one for many people. 
The second friendship love, you feel it for fewer people because it takes level of reasoning. It even takes time to cultivate because I, you can't just see somebody and know he's your friend. You need to be able to even spend time to talk with them. So you feel it for fewer people. The friendship kind of love. I don't have time. The last one is in Ephesians 5 where they said, husbands, love your wife. That's the agape kind of love. So the first one, men and women feel it. Even though men feel it for, to, to mate, women feel it to have a mate. The second one is more for men. Even though women too enjoy it, but it's more, it's, it's men, men like it more. Because men want a friend in their spouse. Women don't know that after the man sleeps with you, what to make him value is whether you are his friend. This is why as a woman must learn to communicate. It's not every time you bring your whole emotional muscle. So women want to make every conversation emotional. The man calls call and say, ah, I might be late today from work or because of... He says, hey, so we are not important. Your work is more important than us. We are the children. Don't make everything emotional. This is why some men don't listen to women. Is that women don't know how to separate their emotion from the facts of what they want to discuss. Men dread negative emotional attitude. So because they want to block your attitude, they also block your information. So you must, you must learn to put out your attitude because women can, men can feel negative attitude. If a man is driving to a street, he can tell that somebody is angry. He will call you there. Where is mommy? What is she doing? Is she upset? Because the, the tension. Men can feel it. And he will run. See? Don't tell him back. He will drop his bag and run. Because he's, he, men dread emotional, negative emotional tension. They dread it. You, you women, the things you can cope with, we can't cope with it emotionally. Women enjoy negative emotion. Women can cope with chaos. Ah, uh, women, ah, uh, uh, this, and everything, I know everything I teach you, I will show you scripture, science, and data. They put machine on women's body when they were having serious argument, a man and woman, serious argument. The man's blood pressure went up. His heart rate, heartbeat, everything went up. That's why most times when there's serious emotional tension, a man wants to leave. He can't cope. His, his heart rate has gone too high. He, if he doesn't leave, there will be physical violence. He has to leave that place. And on the other hand, the woman is saying what? You are not going. They put the same machine on women. They put the same machine on women. Her heart rate is the same. When there was no problem, when there was problem. She said, we are not even fighting. We are just talking. We have not even started the reading. When we start now. <laughs> because she has capacity for serious emotional tension. The man, men run from you. When you tell a man, we need to talk. Ah. Don't be close. Don't book appointment. Just talk. And learn to separate your emotional. How you, wait till your body don't give the thing that time you're feeling. Because if you give it that time, he will dread it. He will dread talking to you. He will associate you with stress. So every time you want to talk, he brings up his shield. Let things be calm. Let, when Asuna is okay, he's eating. You just say, ah, that's you did less. They pay me small, but no problem. Just let it pass like that. He will, he will adjust quickly. Because he knows that, eh, this one should not raise problem. Make a borrow myself sense. But instead, you want to give him all the power. Mm -mm -mm. Let it cool down. It's all my what I'm saying. So, that, so there must be something keeping you after this sexual one. There must be that friendship. Both of you can talk. Then the last one, I have to close. I've taken one of my time. The last one is the agape kind of love. Women like this one because it's sacrificial love. And that's why God specifically told men. You see, the second one, God told women to love their husbands like that. Even though both men and women need friendship, but God particularly told women, love your husband like a friend. Then the one for men, uh, the third one, he told men, even though both people will need it. But women generally are sacrificial. But it's men that struggle with being sacrificial. So he told men, see, at the stage of your life, your, your wife will appreciate that you prioritize her. You put her first. Even though you want to go to work, you put her first. Even though you want to buy a, a pro, a, a, an equipment in the office, you buy something for her first. She wants to know you sacrifice for her. That's the agape kind of love. Now, this third one, you are not meant to feel it for more than one person. Again, I talked about this in Common Love Lies. People say you can love more than one person. No, it depends on which kind of love. If it's sexual love, yes, you can love 1,000 people. Solomon proved it. It can even be more than 1,000. But Solomon proved it. In the day, there were no digital, it wasn't digital age. He couldn't send bulk SMS. He couldn't send bulk email. This means no, no WhatsApp call, no video call. This means he was visiting these people and receiving them one by one. If he saw one per day, there are 365 days in a year. That means if he sees you today, your next appointment is July 5th, 2026. <laughs> he had 1,000 women in his life. So, yes, you can have sexual love for more than one person. You can have connection. All right? So have a, we just have a connection. You can have connection for more than one person. 
but you can't have agape love for more than one person because that kind of love is a commitment, loyal love. It's not based on feeling. It's not, you can't say, I don't love my wife anymore. No, no, no. You can't say, I don't love my husband. No, it's a commitment. It's a loyal love. It's a pledge of love. It's an integrity kind of love. So even though you have feelings for other people, you restructure yourself to say, I must stay loyal and faithful to the person I have pledged to love. Have you been blessed? Come on, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs>